Hey, what's up guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros, and today we're going to be finding out if this $350 laptop can game. This is going to be a very interesting test, but before we do that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by GVG Mall, an online marketplace to gain access to some really awesome discounted game keys, and more specifically, Windows 10 licenses. And if you're interested, use the link down below and buy the Windows 10 Pro activation using our code TB20 to get 20% off. All you have to do to activate Windows 10 license is buy the key by using code TB20 and then throw the Windows 10 key into your Windows 10 activation on the system you wish to install it in and boom, you have activated Windows 10 and you no longer have to look at that horrible watermark in the bottom right corner. So thanks again to GVG Mall for sponsoring this video. Let's get right into the video, shall we? All right, guys, so this video is based around the Acer Aspire 5. This is a 15.6 inch laptop that we're gonna be unboxing here in just a second. But the key feature of it is the fact that for $320, you get the laptop with four gigs of RAM, and then you can upgrade it with, which just fell down right here, another four gigs of RAM, which hopefully this will work. But the whole idea is the Ryzen 3 3200U, which is a third gen Ryzen processor with Vega 3 graphics. It should, in theory, be able to play some games on this laptop. So how about we go ahead and unbox this and see what's inside. All right, so here is the laptop. Are you having trouble? Contact Acer first. Get Karen out of here. Get Karen out of here. <laughs> it came back to me. All right, so here's the laptop in its uh, recycle-friendly material. Um, you know, it's a 15.6 inch laptop, so it's not super big. It's not like a really beefy gaming laptop. So that's where this kind of has a good appeal. If you don't really like the super gamery laptop and you want something that is good for other purposes too. You know, you got this. Looks very thin. It does look really thin. Um, there it is. Boom. It feels very premium. Look at the shape of it. I've yeah. never seen a laptop that's the, look at the bottom. It's like curved. Oh yeah, so that has kind of like a curve to it. Um, has good ventilation on this side. Um, but overall, for a $320 laptop, it has a lot of, I don't know what it is, a good build quality to it. Um, I do have to repackage this, so I should probably like keep it somewhat organized <laughs> over here. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be a decent laptop for somebody who may wanna do some light gaming and older titles, and mainly just a laptop. It's gonna be modern, it's gonna have good battery life. Um, we'll open it up right here and see what we have. We'll probably have some extra B-roll on screen here too. Um, but yeah, that looks pretty damn clean for a cheap laptop. Um, we'll see if it has battery, probably not, but we'll turn it on anyways. I'm sure it will, dude. I can feel it. I'm gonna I'm lean, sure it no, dude. I'm sure it won't, it. but we'll go over the um, actual body of the laptop right now. We'll see the keyboard itself. It's supposed to be backlit. We'll see that when we turn it on. But as we mentioned, it is Ryzen 3 3200U. Uh, it has that inside, and it also has Vega 3 graphics. As you can tell, it does boast the thin design, which you can definitely tell. Um, and I think overall, the build quality is very impressive. Another interesting thing to keep in mind is that the 3200U is actually a dual core and it has four threads. So it actually is really similar to a 200GE Athlon processor. So if you guys are kind of wondering, you know, what is this paired to? Well, 200GE is about the exact same level it'll be on. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and power this on, make sure everything's working properly. And then as we mentioned, we are gonna be upgrading it with four, four gigs of RAM because this only has four gigs of RAM in it. And one thing to mention with Vega APUs, they use onboard memory as the VGA memory. So for like the graphics card memory, if you want your one gig of VRAM, which I think is what it defaults to, you need to get more RAM because you're literally gonna lose system memory to operate that Vega graphics card. So in theory, this thing right now only has like three gigs of usable RAM, which is pretty bad in terms of 29 19 standards going to 2020. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and upgrade that after we plug this thing in and make sure it works. All right, guys, in terms of upgrading this laptop, the teardown was relatively easy. It was kind of hard to find a specific tutorial on how to take this thing apart, but really all you need to do is remove all the screws on the back plate and carefully pry around the edges with one of those like guitar picks or pry tools. We really didn't have that, so we tried to be as careful as we could with something to pry it, uh, but you just have to make sure to lift up all the clips around the edges slowly, but surely you won't break any of those clips. They're pretty durable. And then once you get the back plate off, you can see all the guts. All right, guys, so Matt just got the back panel, which is sitting right over here. This all is a nice, just one piece design, very simple. You know, we got some heat sinks on there and whatnot, but here's our second slot for RAM upgrade, our second DIMM. Um, we have the battery right here. This can be serviced. You see, you have a few screws. It's not quite as easy as a conventional battery replacement. You do actually have to disconnect some ribbon cables and whatnot. Um, it looks like right here, we actually have in just standard M.2 um, SSD, so that can actually be upgraded. I assume you could probably put like a one terabyte drive in it um, if we wanted to. And then over here, we actually have a conventional two and a half inch 
SSD bay where you could literally add one. So that's actually really cool, Matt. Uh, you know, heads heads up, heads up. Let me do that. And then right over here, we have the Wi-Fi um, M.2 adapter. So if for some strange reason you ever want to upgrade that, if that's even you know possible, you, it is serviceable, you can take it out. So there's actually a lot of upgrade options on this board, it looks like, and I'm sure there's some other stuff that I'm missing, but you know, it's looking pretty good for the price. All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and install that RAM and then boot it up and we'll be ready to test it. Yeah, there's a Pringles can, because all we hear is the Pringles here, just Pringles. All right, so it looks like the thing turned back on. We're gonna go ahead and package this thing up, install some games on it, and run through a few benchmarks and see how this thing does. You know, kind of confident. We'll see how it does, though, in some older titles. Kind of confident. Kind of like confident. That. But for the value, this thing is really upgradable, and that's the biggest part of uh, why this is actually a pretty good value. All right, guys, the first game on the palette we have here is CSGO. We're gonna try all those settings first. You know, maybe if it runs really well, we'll bump them up. And let me see if I can find this play button. And yeah, this laptop is 1080p, so we're mainly gonna run the test at 1080p just to show its, well, maximum potential. Cause you know, you could drop this down to 720p, but it is gonna look kind of funky on a screen like this. But in theory, if you wanted to, it wouldn't look nearly as bad as if you did in like a full blown desktop. Also keep in mind, MSI Afterburner is still doing that crazy thing with uh, integrated graphics where like the percentage is like really high. Don't know why it does that, but that's just something we have to deal with. But let's go ahead and see what kind of performance we get. All right guys, so we're in the game right now. And honestly, right off the bat, it's looking pretty pretty solid. I mean, CSGO, of course, is not like a very difficult game to run, but if you get over 60 FPS on like a cheap laptop like this, I mean, there's really not much to complain about. It's so weird using this mouse. I don't know why I grabbed like the most yeah, no, I'm just, gamer. I'm just gonna let you do it. <laughs> How's it feel? Does it feel pretty smooth? Yeah, yeah, it's smooth. The screen's like tiny, but yeah. it'd probably be better if I was like standing in front of it, you know? Yeah, RAM usage is around four-ish gigs, close to five gigs. Keep in mind, as we mentioned before, the Vega graphics do use uh, dedicated RAM or dedicated WAM uh, to uh, use uh, VRAM for this GPU. So you will lose some of the dedicated RAM that you have in your system. So if you want to upgrade this to like 16 gigs of RAM, that'd be the most ideal configuration, even though it would cost a little bit more money. It would be ridiculous right now with how cheap RAM pricing is. Uh, definitely, if you are getting this laptop, you're going to want to get more RAM if you want it to be anything usable really at all because like technically even if you're not playing games you only have like two gigs of ram usable so that was that suck with the ak dude that was something you have to throw a snowball at him all right guys the next game we're going to be testing is actually the halo master chief collection uh the main reason we're testing that even though it's pretty much going to easily run fingers crossed uh because we're mainly testing games that is going to be more doable on this this is not going to load up and play call of duty modern warfare or anything but it's going to be good to play games like minecraft Halo if you wanted to, we'll see how it performs, and CSGO, and then eventually like other Valve games if you want to. You gotta lower your expectations with a laptop like this. You could play basic titles, but just don't expect to play all the AAA games or go out and Apex and max it out. It's just, it's just not gonna happen. So uh, for 300 something dollars, I mean, you're gonna get pretty decent performance to be able to play some games while also using it as a school slash work laptop. All right, guys, so we're gonna dive into some multiplayer. We'll probably do some social games. We'll look at the options real quick. The Master Chief Collection doesn't come with any crazy like video options. It's literally just, well, we we're definitely gonna run this on full screen, not that low of a resolution, but we're gonna run it at 1080p VSync on, just to kind of limit that. We'll crank the FOV up a little bit. Um, the frame rate will be, we'll undo unlimited so we can get uh, a best use case result. We'll save that. Um, and then just kind of see what kind of performance we get. So we'll dive into multiplayer and do a social game because that's pretty quick. Here we are into Halo, ladies and gentlemen. You can play it at 30 FPS like the consoles were, so I mean, that's something. Uh, we'll try to lower some of the stuff in a minute, maybe drop the resolution down a little bit. Oh, see if I can snipe at 30 so you FPS. Do, you have V-Sync on too, I think. Oh, that's true. I can turn V-Sync off. Let's turn V-Sync off and see if we can get a little bit better results. Yay! All right, we're still running around 31, 33-ish FPS, which isn't ideal, but I mean, if you're plugging up a controller and you're playing this like old Halo and you wanna like run the campaigns, God, I'm gonna get like sniped on like crazy. Uh, you could definitely run it at this setting. Um, this is definitely one of the games where it looks like it's gonna be much more uh, demanding on the little Vega GPU. Oh, oh no, oh no, this is gonna be fun. Here we go, guys. Probably the only thing you do is just lower the res. Yeah, we'll lower the res down to probably 720p would be the best use case for this so we can actually see the kind of performance we get. And yeah, that does help a lot. We can actually see better too because that screen's just kind of small. So like 720, honestly, it looks better. Yeah, 720p looks, yeah, that's definitely true. I didn't expect that. 
Sensitivity, sensitivity is like really low too. Oh, okay, <laughs> my, I'm stepping away. We're letting him get a shot here. I might need to crank the sensitivity. Yeah, I, just, I, I, I could already tell by looking at this. It's like really low for me. That's what, Sorry, that's what it is. He's coming in, just drops some kills. Oh, I hit him. Punch, punch. <laughs> punch, punch. But yeah, like guys, 720p is probably ideal for a game like this. And if you do uh, play a game and it's like at around 30-ish FPS, you could probably drop it to 720p and get much better results. Yay! Oh. Oh. Well, there you go. Halo is actually somewhat playable at 720p. 1080p, not so much. Probably on campaign, if you're just casually playing, you can play 1080p. But, you know, there you go. It's, it's playable. All right, guys, the last game we're going to be testing is a good old Minecraft. So we're going to run the settings probably like we'll max out at like 60 FPS. Uh, we'll probably drop some of these things so we can try to get a decent frame rate. I mean, Minecraft's pretty easy to run, but we just want to make sure we're not really uh, pushing this thing too hard. So um, this should be fine in terms of settings. Um, everything's going to load real quick and then we can launch into a survival mode that I started. So this laptop is most likely gonna be pretty good for Minecraft. You could also dive into things like emulators if that's something you're interested in. This would be more than enough power to uh, run some em emulation style games, but um, is this gonna replace your gaming PC? Most definitely not. As you can tell, loading into Minecraft, I mean, this thing is like, struggle it's just it doesn't load things fast enough the cpu is going to pick that 100 percent the fact that it's a dual core it takes a while to load in but once you actually are in i mean it's playable minecraft is a very cpu demanding game and a dual core processor nowadays you know it's just gonna push it to its limits i mean 50 fps is definitely playable in minecraft is it ideal no not really uh but you know you can run around you can do what you want don't expect to download shaders or anything um but yeah this this poor little cpu and gpu combo can Still play some games, uh, expect older titles, but Minecraft, you know, let's just, let's just build a little dirt house real quick. Boom, boom, boom. But yeah, well, let's just do a quick little run real quick, see what kind of performance we can get. See, there's a lot of loading lag. Like the CPU, when it's loading in a bunch of chunks, it's definitely gonna lag and chug a little bit. Um, that seems to be the limiting factor here. Um, another thing you could try if it could improve some of the performance is we are using the Windows install that it came with. I removed as much of the bloatware as I could, uh, but there could be some driver issues or some things with this laptop out of the box that could be limiting its performance. Um, I can give you all an update over on our Twitter if we do end up updating this thing in the future, so follow us over at Tosi Bros Tech. Uh, but I mean, overall, I mean, it's acceptable performance with a little bit of tweaking and uh, messing around with it if this is your daily driving laptop. You have a chance to have a pretty capable little gaming machine for around 350 bucks that you can take anywhere with you and it will complement your uh well gaming pc that you may already have or if you're just looking to give this to somebody who may want to game and also needs a laptop for schoolwork i think it will do a great job so overall let's go ahead and wrap up these benchmarks and uh talk about this thing a little bit all right guys well this laptop for around 350 dollars after upgrades is a pretty impressive option if you were to get a laptop like this maybe like even two years ago you were not going to get anywhere near the performance that you would with something like this ryzen has really delivered a really awesome offering with their apus and i can only expect them to get better and better with the years to come so of course with this being a laptop and having all the parts very small compact and mobile you're not going to be getting like the absolute best thing for the buck because that's just well that's how laptops are you could build a desktop for around $350 that would like blow this thing out of the water So if you're fine with getting a desktop and having to acquire the peripherals and whatnot You know we recommend that but if you need something portable you need something cheap You need something that's power efficient This is a really good go-to option and if you are interested in purchasing this laptop links will be in the description down below They are affiliate links and they do help support us. So if you do purchase down below, thank you very much Another video that we're also getting ready to do which I'm sure we'll maybe put an eye in the top right corner once that video is available is we'll be doing one of those cheap, kind of like no-name brand laptops as a 3500 unit that's actually around the same price right now as this. So that'll be a really interesting comparison. So be sure you're subscribed to see when that video goes live and also comment down below if you're interested in picking this laptop up. And if you have a laptop like this and if you, well, can game on it, what games do you play? Kind of interested to see what kind of games you're playing on a budget laptop like this. So we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Peace. Oh, sorry. It's yeah. our new thing, remember? Yeah, yeah we do that. <laughs>